If you're here today, amen. If you're here today and you've served in any branch of the United States military, we'd like to have you stand. We want to take a moment to honor you. We have a little gift that we'd like to hand out to you today. So if you've served in any branch, come on, let's give it up. Come on, guys, let's, let's thank them today. Let's, we honor you. Thank you today. Thank you for serving this great nation. Come on, let's give them a big hand today. Amen, amen. Thank you so much. We honor you today for your service to this great nation. God bless you, your families. God bless the United States of America. Someone said amen today. Amen. Last week we had pastor's appreciation. John, I'm going to hand that to you. We had pastor's appreciation. Many of you gave. And we just want to, my wife and I, 22 years, 22 years in this community of bringing God's love to the city, one person at a time, leading people to become fully devoted followers of Jesus. And you're part of the church family here today. We are so honored that we have the great privilege to serve you today. And so thank you for that. Hey, this morning we are continuing in our series on the gifts of the Spirit. Everyone say, gifts of the Spirit. Pastor Glenn kicked it off last week. He talked about speaking gifts. He talked about tongues and interpretation of tongues. He talked about the gift of prophecy. Pastor Glenn and John. And John's going to team teach with me today as well. And uh, hopefully it, it was a benefit to you. Hopefully it was. I got a lot of good reports from last Sunday. I was encouraged. And hopefully uh, if you've not heard that message, you can go back and watch it online. I believe it will be a great blessing to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 is our text. We're going to read verses 1. We're going to go to verses 4 through 11. And as we do here at City Church, I want you to stand with me in the honor of reading God's word. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And uh, we're going to read verse 1 and then verse 4 through 11. Paul the Apostle writing to the church at Corinth. And there's two tip typically extremes that take place when we speak of spiritual gifts. First, there is a group of people that don't accept spiritual gifts are for the church today. And they operate, if you Google spiritual gifts or you know, gifts of the Spirit today, if you Google that, you'll see their whole polemics. Guys have written whole dissertations on why God doesn't work miracles or why God doesn't give spiritual gifts like he did in the book of Acts to the church today. There's the other extreme where spiritual gifts are abused, where people have a special gift that God's given them. Maybe it's a gift of healing or word of knowledge or miracles, and they'll use it seemingly for their own profit. It, it, there's generally two extremes where the focus and the emphasis becomes upon a person's ministry rather than the person of Christ. And we want to bring some clarity today. We want to, just like Paul did, there, were, there, there was some clarity that needed to happen. The church of Corinth, they were operating in supernatural gifts. They weren't a perfect people. They were far from it. They had lots of brokenness in, in their midst. But here's the thing. God loves people today. God loves people today. He loves them so much. He cares about them so much that he's willing to use broken vessels. God uses imperfect people in imperfect ways to accomplish his perfect purposes in our life. And so spiritual gifts are an operation, a working of the Holy Spirit in our life. And Paul is addressing this issue. So beginning with verse number one, the Bible says, Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brother, brothers, and, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You can be uninformed. You can be ignorant to what the Holy Spirit desires to do in and through your life. Verse number four. There are different kinds of gifts. Hear me today. There are different kinds of gifts. Different ways that the Holy Spirit works in our life. But the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service. But the same Lord. Ephesians chapter Four, Paul talks about the different kinds of service. There is ministries, there are apostolic ministries and pastoral ministries and teaching ministries and evangelistic ministries. There are services of, of serving other people, the, the, the ministry of helps, different kinds of service. Then there are different kinds of workings. But in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation. Everyone say manifestation. The word manifestation means expression of or extension. There's the, this is the expression or the extension of the Holy Spirit at work in our life. The manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. This is for the benefit of all the believers. Spiritual gifts are not given to benefit you necessarily personally for your own benefit. They're given for the common good for the body of Christ. To one there is given the spirit of the message of wisdom. To another the message of knowledge. By the same spirit, to another gift of faith, to another the, to, to, 
by the same spirit to another gifts of healing by that one spirit. To another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and still to another interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of the same spirit, and he distributes them. Everyone say he. The Holy Spirit distributes them to each one just as he determines. Just as he determines. These next few minutes, we're going to talk to you on this idea. Believing God will use me to change impossible situations. Come on. Believing God is going to use you. He's going to use you to change impossible situations. Can I pray today? Father, thank you today for the work of your spirit. Thank you, Lord, already in this just these last couple of moments. We've just had an expectation arise in our hearts to believe you to do something greater. God, this isn't about myself. This isn't about the end of John on the stage. This is about Christ being glorified in our midst and building up the body of Christ, empowering and releasing your people, Lord, to believe you for greater things to believe you for spiritual gifts to work in their lives. We thank you today for the ministry and the work of the Holy Spirit. We pray that you'll give us ears to hear and spiritual eyes to to, to see. I pray today for any discouragement, any doubt, any unbelief. I pray today that it will come under the submission of the Lordship of Christ. We believe today that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we simply declare the truth of who you are and what you desire to do. We ask this now in Jesus' wonderful and mighty name. And everyone said, amen. Amen. You may be seated. We're talking about manifestation gifts or gifts of the Spirit. Last week, Pastor Glenn and, and John talked about the speaking gifts, specifically tongues and various tongues, interpretation of tongues and prophecy. Today, I'm going to be speaking to you on power gifts. These are gifts to do, faith, miracles, and healing. Next week, we're going to talk about revelation gifts, gifts to know, gifts gifts of wisdom, gifts of knowledge, and a discernment. Uh, our, our, Our understanding, our foundation for spiritual gifts, Pastor Glenn read it. I want to read it again this week. You put it up for me. Spiritual gifts are God given abilities, desires, and empowerments given to the body of Christ, given to the body of Christ to honor Christ or Jesus and to build up the church. To honor Christ, to honor Jesus, and to build up the body of Christ. You see, there's a purpose. God's created us for purpose. When you look at the life of Jesus, the Bible says that Jesus went around doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the enemy. The purpose of Christ was to operate in a supernatural way so that people could experience healing, deliverance, that people could experience a supernatural encounter with the living of God. You see, when Jesus walked on this earth, Jesus was a man. Now, Jesus was fully God. He was fully God. Philippians chapter 2 says he was fully God. He was in the image of God. He was very God himself who dwelt and lived among us. But he came in the form of man. In other words, Jesus being fully God set aside for a period of time, that prerogative to operate like God. Because God can do anything. God literally, God can speak. And the whole world's universes come into existence. But when Jesus came in the form of flesh, he chose to operate as a human, showing us that it was possible to live a life empowered by the Holy Spirit. So when we see Jesus do miracles... When we see Jesus do extraordinary things, he did them as a man empowered by the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's exactly how it happened. He had faith. He had faith. He had the operation of faith in his life. He had the operation of healing in his life. He had the operation of the gift of miracles in his life. And what happens when you begin to fulfill your purpose, you begin to operate in the gifts that God has created you to to operate in, you build, you honor Christ, and you build up the church. And here's the final thing. You become a witness to the world that desperately needs a Savior. Someone said amen. Amen. Right? You became a witness. 
In Mark's Gospel, chapter 5, when Jesus healed the man, we heard about it two weeks ago, and I talked about Jesus healing the demoniac. Immediately, that man, after he was delivered from the oppression of the evil one, he began to share his faith with his friends. He began to tell other people about the work of Christ. Probably 15 years ago in a church service, there was a group of people on Sunday morning. We had gathered as a, a, a regular Sunday morning worship experience, and there was a young man that was in the hospital. And the doctors had given up hope for him. He had overdosed on drugs on a Friday night. And this was a Sunday morning. And we began to pray as a congregation. Just like we just did a couple of moments ago. We literally prayed for this man. And while we were praying for this man in the service, the doctors, the doctors had given up hope. Listen, the doctors had given up hope. But while we were praying in that service, that young man set up. He was instantaneously healed, completely restored in his right mind. That's called the gift of faith. That's called the gift of miracles. And you know what happened as a result of that? That next Sunday, whole section of the church was full. I mean, people came. They wanted to come and see what Christ had done. See, the gift of healing, the gift of faith, the gift of miracles is for today. There's a lot of myths. There's a lot of misunderstanding about spiritual gifts. And one of the misunderstandings is that spiritual gifts were for another generation. They were for a previous time. They were for a, a different group of people. My Bible tells me that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You see, Jesus has never changed. Some people, you know, there's kind of this sense that maybe there's a person who's been operating in a spiritual gift. They've, they've had miracles happen. They've had healings happen. And they start a ministry and they travel and they get on television. And all of a sudden we start to see these people as super saints or super Christians. I want you to know there's no super saints. There's no super Christians. There's only one super Jesus. Come on. There's only one Jesus today. The spiritual gifts are not just for a few. Spiritual gifts are to operate in the body of Christ. Spiritual gifts aren't something that we manufacture. We can't will it up. We can't, like, you know, we can't just like make it happen. We can't purchase it. We can't buy it. You're never going to be good enough. No, they're spiritual gifts that God distributes as he freely wills. They're beyond natural talents. Many of you have been given a natural talent. Maybe it's to work with computers, or maybe some of you can, you know, you're, you're really good at mathematics, and I've always been jealous of you. <laughs> maybe you have a gift to communicate or a gift to speak. These are beyond natural talents or inclinations that you have to work with your hands or do something. These are, these are spiritual endowments, and we're going to see them take place in the Bible. And I believe that what Jesus did yesterday, Jesus desires to do today. You see, when we operate in spiritual gifts, we've got to be willing to make ourselves available to be used by God. To be used by God. To, to be willing to step out. And when we are willing to be used by God, we're not going to do it perfectly every time. I remember the very first time that I ever preached. I thought, my, <laughs> those poor people. <laughs> I remember one time, I was, I was a brand new rookie preacher, and I was... In a nursing home service, the Lord, the way the Lord trained me is my wife and I did three nursing home services a week. And uh, one of the nursing home services was to a group of people that had Alzheimer's. And the nurses, they were so thrilled to see us. My wife would bring her guitar, and they would make every single patient come out of their room, and they would stick them in this room because I had, my wife and I had one hour that we got to spend with them. And I, one time I got up there, and, and, and I, had, I was supposed to preach, John, and and I looked at these people and I thought, there's no one here. This, that no. I mean, it was just one of those moments. And I, I don't even know what I said. But all I know, I opened my Bible and I read like a couple of scripture verses. And I sat back down and I had Laura sing. And I couldn't wait to get out of that place. But the Holy Spirit begins to work in our lives. In order for us to grow in the gifts of God, we have to be willing to be used by the Lord. And what I want to have happen in this series today, first of all, I want to equip you. I want to equip the body of Christ. I want to equip the body of Christ. There's a group of people that have been praying for the service today. They've been praying all weekend. And in between the worship songs today, we're going to open the altars back up. If you remember, if you were here pre-COVID, we always had prayer every single service. We would open up an altar time for people to come and receive healing. And we're going to start that back up again. And we're going to do that today. And there's a group of people that have been equipped and they've been empowered they're believing God to work healings and miracles. We're believing for faith to be released. 
So that we're, gonna, we're believing that God is going to release these things in a greater dimension in the body of Christ than we've ever seen. I believe greater things are yet to come. There's some great, come on, amen. I believe greater things are yet to come in the kingdom of God. Everywhere in the world, everywhere in the world where the body of Christ has experienced explosive growth, there are mighty miracles. There are supernatural healings. There are things that are extraordinary. They're above the natural that begin to take place in the hearts of God's people. They begin to manifest among themselves and people see that there is a living God who's still alive. Come on. There's a living God who still works miracles in our midst. So I want to talk about the gift of faith for just a moment. The gift of faith. The gift of faith is a supernatural ability to believe and to trust God for extraordinary results. To believe and to trust God for extraordinary results. John Wimber was a, 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 a very famous pastor in America in the 1980s and the 1990s. If you've heard of Bethel music or the Bethel church, a lot of their inspiration came from this man. He, he planted churches and he was an inspiring man in my life. He wrote books, lots of books on miracles and healings. And I love what he said about the gift of faith. He said, it is a mysterious surge of confidence which sometimes arises within a person, faith with a specific situation or need. It's a surge, something that rises up. Faith, Webster's Dictionary defines as a belief or trust or loyalty in God, a complete confidence. Someone once said that faith is a leap into the dark that lands you in the light. But that's not exactly true. Faith is a sure way. Faith has eyes. Faith sees the promises of God far off, and they believe that they are going to come to pass. You have a choice today. You have a choice today. You are a believer today. You have Christ in you. If you haven't accepted Christ, if you don't know the love of God and experience his forgiveness, you can experience that before you leave here today. As a matter of fact, you can experience it right in your seat right now. You can ask Christ to come into your heart while I'm speaking. There is a, a faith that I believe that God deposits, deposits in every believer. But not every believer is open to allowing God to use them in this gift of faith. The Bible says, the just shall live by faith, by faith. I have a little illustration here. Anybody ever try to take a, 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 a screw out of a door, or maybe you got a screw and a, you know, and a piece of metal, you're trying to take it apart, maybe it's a table or something, and so you go to your trusty, like I did this morning, I went to our trusty tool drawer, I, I mean our, our trusty junk drawer upstairs in the kitchen, and I found myself a little screwdriver like this, right? Come on, you know what I'm talking about? You go over there, oh, man, it's pretty small. I don't know if I can do it. And you go over there, and you tr put that screwdriver in, you try to turn that thing. Well, that screw's been in there for 17 years. I mean, that screwdriver, that screw's been in there before Moses was born, you know, and it's got a little rust around the edges, and you're trying to turn that thing, you're trying to turn that thing, and, oh, man, this to very little avail. And you go back into the drawer, and say, oh, you know what, that was a Phillips head, but, you know, you go, maybe I can find a little bigger screwdriver because I need some more torque. And so you go in there, and, well, you don't have a, a Phillips head, but you got a flat head, but it's a little bit of bigger. And so you put it in there, you start turning that screw, and next thing, you know what happens? That tip starts to, screw, that, the tip starts to strip out. You know what I'm talking about? That, that little Phillips head starts, oh, oh, I better stop. I better stop. And then you call your buddy. Call Alan Nettles over there, and he's got... He's got some real man tools. He's got the power tool. I tell you what, when you put the right tool for the tough job, you get the job done every time. Someone said amen. You see, you can live a life as a believer and just using your natural means, your natural abilities. Lots of Christians do. They just kind of go through life and, you know, they're trying to do it on their own. And, oh, man, you know, every once in a while you'll get that screw out. and you'll get. You know, I'm not saying you can't live life. But I am saying it's a lot easier and a lot better to allow the power of the Holy Spirit to fill you so that you can operate in spiritual gifts in your life. The gift of faith. The gift of faith. It's a supernatural ability to believe God for extraordinary results in our life. All throughout Scripture, we see people who operated in this extraordinary kind of faith. We see a man by the name of Elijah. 
Elijah, if you know his story, the, he does a lot of miracles in his life. But one of the most profound miracles of faith to me that he did was when he stood on a place called Mount Carmel. If you go to Israel, you can actually go to this very spot where Elijah was. And the prophets of Baal were there. and They were worshiping their false gods. And they were cutting themselves. And, 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 and Elijah just gets a little caustic. I find it very interesting today. A lot of people really are in love with the compassion of Jesus. And I am too. But there were times that Jesus was a little caustic. There was a little time that Jesus was a little direct. There was a little, there were some times that Jesus, when people were doing really stupid things, he called them on it. And Elijah had that same kind of spirit. They're out there, they're cutting themselves. They got, you know, and Elijah challenges them to this great, this great, this great battle, right? You worship your gods and you do what you got to do. We're going to make this little altar and put some water on it. And we're going to see what God sends fire down from heaven. Right? Come on. And these guys are out there and they're cutting themselves and they're doing all their crazy stuff. And they're trying to call fire down from heaven and nothing, hands, and nothing happens. And then one man who knows God. One man who has a relationship with God. One man who has confidence and trust that God is able to make the impossible possible. One man says simply these words, answer me, Lord. Answer me so that these people will know that you are Lord, our God, and that you are turning their hearts back again. And then he prayed this prayer, the next verse, then the fire of the Lord came. Bam. Just like that. You know why? Because Elijah had faith. Daniel was a man who operated in supernatural faith. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the, the boys that were called to come alongside of, of, of Daniel and minister in their generation to the people of Israel when they were in captivity to the Babylonians. There was a king by the name of Nebuchadnezzar, and he built a false idol. And he tells, you know, he, 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 he's got this guy Daniel and these three boys, and they're the, they're the best in the land. They had a spirit of excellence on them. They succeeded in everything. They were different. They were, they were set apart in their generation. And I want you to know today, God has called us as his believers to be set apart, to be special people, to be peculiar people, not to follow the ways of the world, not to follow the customs and the habits and the patterns of the people around us. But God wants us to believe him for something greater. Come on, amen? God wants us to believe him that he's got some power, supernatural power to operate. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they, 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 were, they were saying, if you don't bow down, you're gonna, we're going to throw you into the fire. You know what they said? They said, whether, you, whether we get thrown into the fire or not get thrown into the fire, we're not going to bow before your gods. We're not going to bow before your gods. We do not defend ourselves. And then immediately they get thrown into the fire. I want you to see what happens in verse number 20. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servant. You know what happened that day, man? That fire didn't consume them. They came out. They didn't even have smoke on their clothes. You know what? They believed for God's supernatural protection in their life. Jesus modeled to us when storms of life come, when challenges come, there's a gift of faith that will release peace in our life. All of us have times where our world seems to be shaken, where things are spinning out of control. Listen, we experienced it these last two years of COVID, especially when it first hit. We had no idea what this thing was about. There was such fear. And I'm afraid. I'm afraid today in the good sense. I'm concerned today in the good sense that there are too many people still living in fear. I'm not saying that COVID isn't a real disease. We've had people in our church die from it, but I want you to know today that the Bible declares to us that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and love and of a sound mind. And the weapon formed against us in lesson, like Shadrach, Meshach, Meshach, and Abednego, whether we live or whether we die, we will not bend our knee to the idols of this world. We will serve the living God. Come on. Someone said amen today. Amen. Disciples. You know, Jesus is ministering. Miracles are happening. I love, this is one of my favorite stories in all the Bible, in Mark's gospel. You know, Sea of Galilee, just a little tiny lake. Winds are blowing. Jesus is asleep in the midst of the storm. Sleeping on a pillow. Not even worried. CNN's upset. New York Times is worried. Fox News is worried. New York Times is worried. Washington Post is, everybody in the world is worried. Jesus isn't nervous. 
Jesus isn't concerned. Listen, I want you to know today, he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. The same God that was with the, the disciples in the boat is the same God that will be with you. The Bible says that Jesus simply got up and he spoke peace to the storm. And your environment and the atmosphere and your world and your life today, you have to be a person who will allow God to work through you in a supernatural faith. To believe that when everything else is coming apart, believe when everything else is coming apart, you have the gift of faith. You have a deposit of faith that God has placed into your life. And the last area that I want us to see in this area of the gift of faith is to believe God for provision. To believe God for provision. That once again, Peter doesn't know what to do. He has a tax bill that's due. You have an electric bill that's due. Come on, come on. You have a mortgage payment that's due. You have a business situation that you need God to provide for. I, I don't know what you have need of today, but what I know is that God, is his eyes, the Bible says, the eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout the earth, looking for those whose hearts are loyal to him. He's looking for people who will operate in faith. He's looking for people who will believe him for greater. He's looking for people who will trust him to do extraordinary things in their lives if they only believe. Jesus told Peter to go down, do what he did. He was a fisherman, goes down, and immediately, immediately he pulls the fish out, and there was a coin in that fish's mouth. And that day, Jesus showed Peter that by faith, by faith, every need in Peter's life would be met. Hear me today. Hear me today. There's the gift of faith, and it's an operation with the gift of knowledge. What I've, ex what I've seen in my own personal experience is that when God releases faith in our life, many times there's other gifts at work. Gifts of faith in operation with knowledge or wisdom. Gifts of faith in operation of healing or with miracles. 2015, 2015, we purchased this property. We had no money. We began to negotiate on this property in 2014. We had no money. I remember this like yesterday. I remember sitting in a meeting with a group of guys, and they were saying, well, that's a big number. You know, originally they were asking multiple millions of dollars, and we had, we had, we had nothing in our bank account to purchase this building. But what I knew, I knew that I knew that I knew that God had called us to take a next step in him. See, God always, I want to say forward. God always is leading us forward. God is always leading us upward. I, I told the guys, I said, guys, yeah, we, we, we got to do this. We got to buy this bill. How are we going to do it? I don't know. I don't know how we're going to do it, but I've never had the money to do anything that God's ever wanted me to do. I just simply have faith to believe. Come on, someone said amen. I believed. I saw the gift of faith in operation. I saw it in my life. We purchased the property, closed the deal, complicated deal, difficult deal, a lot of opposition, but I refused to let go. I held on like a pit bull. This little Jewish boy up there, he got a hold of those guys and he wouldn't let go of that deal. Devil tried to throw us off, shake us off. He wasn't letting, we're, this building was ours. We declared it. Building properties are a complete mess when we purchased this property. I mean, every air conditioning. I don't know how many are, 30 air conditioning. Every air conditioning had been stolen. All the copper wire had been stripped out. The building had been left in disarray. I mean, it was a mess. It was a complete mess. Weeds were overgrown. It was just, it was a mess of a place. We began to, God's people, we got together. We began to exercise faith, and we got in here. We could put some action to our faith and got some elbow grease and began to clean. And we had people give and raise, we raised hundreds of thousands of dollars to do the remodeling on this building. And we got down to three days before August 22nd, which was going to be the grand opening. And we painted all the outsides of the buildings, all the inside of the buildings, except for this building. We were running low on funds. A pastor friend comes up to me, drives up to the property, looking at all the work. And, man, people were all over the place, contractors and church people. We were cleaning. We had the bobcats. We had a burn pile for 52 days out here. We burned more junk than you ever seen in your life. We had 20-some 40-yard dumpsters that we hauled out of here. We were going at it, and we painted everything except for this one building right here that you're in today. My pastor friend pulled up, and he looked at me, and that building was still brown. I think it was brown and tan or something, dark brown, and he said, uh, you going to paint that building? I said, oh, I don't know, man. 
I don't have the money for that. He says, you have the money. You got to trust God. He says, you need to paint that building. The painters were outside painting. This was on a Thursday afternoon, and I, I, I talked to the, the head painter guy, and I said, listen, I want you to paint that building. He said, all right. I said, how much is going to be? He told me the number is a big number. I'm like, oh, well, we're, we're going to believe God. Gary said I could do it. I believe it, right? Sometimes you got to come alongside of someone else and speak faith. I needed in that moment that someone else to come alongside and speak faith to me. And he spoke faith to me, and I believe God. And those painters started on Friday. This is a big building. A, those guys out there, they're, they call it blow and go. They got that blow, they got that gun, got the compressor going, and they're blowing and going. And, and it's Thursday afternoon, and they're not done. There's this whole front section of this, this whole part of this, whole front part of the building. All that kind of spaceship-looking stuff over there hadn't been painted. And, and uh, I look over towards the coast, and you know what I see? It's the middle of August, and storm clouds are coming. And I, it was dark. You know how it gets black dark before it rains here? And you know where they were coming? They were headed straight for this building. Come on. Now you can say, well, I don't know about that. I'm just telling you this is what happened. This is my story. You can argue with somebody else's story, but this is my story. And I stood there in that parking lot. And that painter was looking at me, and that rain was coming straight for us. I said, Lord, I need you to send that rain another direction. Literally, I could feel feel the Holy Spirit as I said those words. Literally, I saw those, those clouds. They just began to move that direction. And guess what? They painted. They painted for the rest of that day. They got the whole building done. They had the last, the last guys, we had these little poles, these little light poles out here, and they were painting with this black oil-based paint. And I'm telling you, the, they were on the last pole with a ladder painting that thing, and the rain began to come. We got the whole thing painted. God held back the rain. Come on. God held back the rain till the very last pole was done. That's faith. And here's what I want you to know. That wasn't just for me. The gift of faith is available for all. Jesus said, all things are possible to them that believe. But you got to guard your heart you got to guard your heart. Guard your heart. There's all kinds of reasons, all kinds of excuses. We have life experience, and this person didn't get healed, and that person didn't get healed. And I'm like, I don't have to have an answer for that. I don't have to have an answer. Listen, I don't know why. Why do you have to have an answer for everything? Jesus just told us to simply believe. Listen to what the Hebrew says. See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. Who's your source today? Who's your source today? See, healing, miracles, faith is a result of the words that you speak. It's a result of the words that you speak. The Bible says that Jesus spoke to his disciples. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, small as a mustard seed, Chuck Smith, I love what he said. He said, you know, if Jesus said if we have faith the size of a mustard seed, he said, can you imagine what we could do if we had the faith the size of, of an avocado seed? <laughs> right? If you have faith, you'll say, you'll speak. You'll speak to the mulberry tree. It'll be uprooted. Life and death are in the power of your tongue. Faith cometh, faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. What are you hearing today? What are you listening to today? What's in your spirit today? Are you believing God? Are you believing God maybe for a miracle? We're believing for a miracle in my wife's body. Maybe you're believing God for the restoration of a marriage. Maybe you're today, it's a simple believing God for financial provision in your life, for the open door in your business, for a new opportunity. Everything that's accomplished in your life that's worthwhile always is accomplished by the release of supernatural faith. There's a gift of faith that God wants to empower and release in your life. John's going to come and he's going to talk to us about the gift of miracles. Right. Let's hear from Pastor Eugene. Awesome job. Awesome job. What a great com communicator. I'm just going to take a few minutes because I believe Pastor Eugene, he has created such a wonderful atmosphere in this place to really believe God. Listen, we're talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. 
And God loves us, and he loves you, and he wants to move through you and in you today. But I don't believe he wants us to get bogged down in the weeds concerning definitions, so on and so forth. We teach that because it's in the Bible, and we need not to be uninformed. However, when it comes to God moving, he is your answer. Jesus is the answer. You have a need, Jesus is the answer. You have sickness, Jesus is the answer. You have uh, lack, Jesus is the answer. Whatever the question is, Jesus is the answer. Amen. And the pastor made a beautiful, beautiful outlay today for us to trust God for an answer in our lives and not to get bogged down in semantics. However, the Bible does say there's multitude of gifts and there's definitions for all of them. But what our heart is and what we've prayed for and many people have prayed for is that you would see that God is a whole lot bigger than what you might be facing. On, God is a whole lot bigger than what the doctor might have said. God's a whole lot bigger than what the bank book has said. I want you to know that God's bigger and he's greater and he wants to move in your life. And we need to take a step of faith always to meet and reach out to God as he meets our needs. So today I get the opportunity to briefly talk about the gifts of miracles. It's a wonderful gift. And let me kind of just give you what the definition of the gifts of miracles are. Uh, working of miracles, excuse me. Uh, miracles, a supernatural intervention in the ordinary course of nature by the Spirit of God. Everyone say that with me. That's highlighted here. Intervention in the ordinary. One more time intervention in the ordinary. A lot of times we think a miracle is a little baby being born. We see that baby. I just had the privilege. I have a two-month-old grandbaby, and I look at it. Oh, what a miracle. Look at those fingers and the eyes and the eyelashes. And we look, and we speak in baby tongues to them. You know, you know how we do, right? And then we say, it's a miracle. Well, it's not really a miracle because it wasn't an intervention in the ordinary. That's the ordinary way God creates. He creates through babies being born, and that's how things are happening. The general sense also, we use the, 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 the thought generally uh, back in 1980, we said uh, the miracle on ice. I'm kind of older. I don't know if anybody remembers but it was when the United States hockey team beat the Russian team in the Olympics. And up until that time, the Russians won four Olympics in the past. And they call it the miracle of on ice because Americans were only allowing amateurs to play in the Olympics. And all the other countries were allowing their best players, professionals to play. And so the United States won. They call it the miracle on ice. It wasn't really a miracle. But in a general sense, it was a miracle. Why? Because any underdog can win. Come on. Any underdog can win in Jesus. You might feel, oh, but you don't know my problem. Yeah, but Jesus does. And he wants to make that connection for you today. He says, I know all about it, but would you come and believe me for a miracle? Would you come and believe me for a healing today? Would you come and believe that I can intervene in the natural way of things that are happening and do something in your behalf? There's so many ways of a miracle. We see it throughout the scriptures. Let me just tell you about another one. And I'm, I'm trusting that they're going to work with me here in the uh, video room. Yeah. Uh, Elisha. Let me tell you about Elisha. Elisha was a prophet. He was the understudy of Elijah. And he had a, whole, uh, a small group. Let me encourage you, if you're not in a small group, you really need to get into one, right? Because inside small groups is the best way that we can allow God to use us one to another. This is a big congregation, a big room. It's, it's a little bit harder, but God still can move. Amen. We want to encourage you to get inside a small, small group and be a part of that. Elisha had a small group. And the people in his small group said, Elisha, the place where we're staying is way too small. We need to build the bigger one. So Elisha said, okay, I'll go with you. And so one of the fellows was taking an axe, and he was cutting down a tree. And as he was cutting down a tree, the head of the axe went into the water. Now, obviously, that iron head of the axe is going to fall and sink into the bottom. But what happened? They went to Elijah. And they asked them, they said, this thing happened. Let's pick up the story in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse number 7. 
The Bible says, where did it fall, the man of God asked. And when he showed him the place, Elijah cut a stick and threw it into the water at that spot. Then the axe head floated to the surface. That's a miracle. It's changing the ordinary and as having extraordinary. Today we're believing for a miracle for you. Jesus performed the miracle when he turned the water into wine. Ordinarily it's going to take time for, for, for grapes to ferment, but when Jesus touches it, all of a sudden, wow, a miracle. Jesus wants to bring a miracle in your life to, wow, we can see things happening right away. So as... Uh, Pastor Eugene comes back up here. We want to believe that God's going to do something for you. We want to believe that he's going to lift your faith to a place where you could believe he can intervene in your life. And not only that he can, but he wants to, and he will. Amen. Amen. So what do we do with this today? So what do we do? What do we do? We're going to believe God to do extraordinary things. To make impossible situations change in our life. First, we have to ask. We simply have to ask. Jesus said, you have not because you ask not. There's an asking. Paul in 1 Corinthians 14, 1 says, desire spiritual gifts. We have to ask the Holy Spirit to give us gifts. We have to ask. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. So there is an asking. It isn't just for a church service. It can happen in your job. A friend of mine was a concrete guy. And uh, he was pouring a slab. Pouring a sidewalk with his son. His son was probably 15, 16 years of age at the time. And Stan was telling me, he said, my son was really struggling in his faith and his walk with the Lord. He said, I was pouring his slab. And he said, I got down to the very end. And he said, there wasn't enough concrete to finish the sidewalk. And he said, I looked at my son. I said, Lee, I said, you want to see a miracle? And Lee went, oh, yeah. Okay. And Lee, just, Stan just simply prayed. He said, Lord, we need more concrete. Now, how many of you know that's impossible, right? Concrete just doesn't magically appear. But there was a guy named Stan Coat who knew God. There was a, a, a man named Stan Coat who believed that there was a God who was able to do extraordinary things in seemingly natural situations. And he said they kept pouring, they kept pouring. He said there was no way. He said there was no concrete left in that drum. He said, but they kept pouring, they kept pouring, they kept pouring. He said he finished that whole slab and there was one wheelbarrow left over. Come on, someone give God a great big hand. He asked. You have to make yourself available. You have to make yourself available to be used by God in the workplace, in your family, right? In your family. I love it when you operate in your family outside of it. We're going to, and listen, we're going to have a moment here. And we have some people that have been praying all week. and We've empowered them, you know. Jesus, he, he commanded us to lay hands on the sick. He commissioned us to go out and do it. And our heart, we want to do it because we want to obey. We want to obey the great command is to love people. Love God and love people. So it flows out of that. But you got to make yourself available to be used by the Lord. I'm laying in bed and I'm talking to my son. and I just love it when you're with your family. And I needed a miracle. I had a physical problem in my body. I remember this so clearly. And I told my son the same thing. You know what's really cool when you do it in your home and your kids get to see it? They know that there's a living God today. He doesn't just dwell in a church house. He wants to dwell in your house. He wants to live in your home and in your family. It ain't just enough for the preacher, boy. It's for you. It's in your job. And I remember praying just a simple prayer and watching God instantaneously right in front of my son's eye re remove this thing that I had on the bottom of my foot. My boy saw it. You know what happened? I made myself available in that moment. I was watching TV. That's not a real spiritual moment, Pastor. I'm just telling you what happened. I made myself available to God. We have to create an atmosphere in our personal lives. We have to create an atmosphere where God will work supernaturally. Years ago, my wife and I were pastors. We were associates at a church. God was working in this church in miracles. And what I've, ex what I've seen and I've experienced that there are seasons and times. You know that 
Jesus could do no mighty miracles except a few in Capernaum. You know why? Because the people didn't believe. Jesus, Jesus, who everywhere he went, went around doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil because God was with him, could do no mighty miracles in Capernaum. So there has to be an atmosphere, the atmosphere of your heart, the atmosphere of your life, the atmosphere of faith. You give all the reasons. You give all the reasons why it can't happen, why it shouldn't happen. You can do all, you know, that's, that's the wrong way to think about this. It's the wrong way to believe about this. You don't have to have an explanation. He just simply wants us to believe, to simply trust. The just shall live by faith, even when they don't see it. All right? Even, now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. That's faith. I walk into a church service. Pastor, uh, there was a pastor that was here a couple months ago named Willie, and we walked in late to the service together. And I'm standing in this service, and I look down at the front, and there's people worshiping. I look down the front, and this guy falls over. And I'm thinking, oh, that's the Holy Ghost. He falls over under the power. Well, that's not what happened. That guy had a heart attack. That guy had a heart attack in the middle of that service. And I'm like, there's no way this guy can die in this service. But this is a God meeting. I tell people, this church building is the safest place to be on Sunday morning. You know why? Because this is God's house. This is God's house. There's life here. Jesus is here. And I remember having that thought. I said, there's no way this guy can die here. So I, I they, they rush him out. Paramedics rush him out. I find out the next day he's down at the hospital down the road. And I go down in the morning and he's in ICU. And he's just got a great big smile. And he's just got no fear. And he just had a massive heart attack. And so I went in. They only gave me a couple minutes. I went and I just prayed a really simple prayer. I prayed over him. I asked the Lord to heal him. And I went back to the church. So that night we had a church service again. And we were in revival services. And I walked in and that guy was on the front row. And he was worshiping Jesus. Come on. There was an atmosphere. But I want you to hear what happened. Guess what happens? When miracles happen, people begin to tell other people. People gossip about a lot of things. But I wonder what would happen if we begin to gossip about the goodness of God. We begin to gossip about the miraculous, miracle-working yes. power, the provision. Come on. Someone said amen. amen. That next Sunday, he brought his whole family. There was a whole row. This guy, this guy was an FBI agent. He brought his whole family. They were all sitting there. I went up, and I was introducing myself. And, and I, the mom... She said, well, this is my daughter, and she's deaf, and she can't hear. Will you pray for her? I said, why not? I'm not the healer. He's the healer today. Come on. Jesus is the healer today. But what I realized in that moment is there was an atmosphere of faith to believe God for the impossible. A simple prayer. Guys, it wasn't a shundai and a shout. It wasn't a spit and a slobber. It wasn't a slap and a dap on the head. None of that. <laughs> it was a simple prayer right there in that pew. Just right there, standing right there, just standing right there. Instantaneously, her ears were open, and she was made, her ears were completely able to hear. Come on, just give God a big hand. Because here's what's going to happen today. There's an atmosphere. I want, you to, I want you to be equipped today. I want you to be empowered today to lead this, to take the Spirit of God, His giftings that work in your life, and operate in Monday, and your Tuesday, and your Wednesday. But some of us need a miracle today. You've come to the right place. Some of you need a healing today. The worship team, Josh, and the worship team are going to lead us in the song of miracles. And I want to encourage you. We're going to sing the first song, but I want you to prepare your heart. I want you to get this heart and atmosphere where God can do something supernatural. I want you to just begin to worship Jesus. Tell him how wonderful he is, how powerful, how great, how mighty. And let's prepare our hearts to receive what God has for us. At the end of the first song, I'm going to come up, and I'm going to invite us. I'm going to, there's an altar team group of people, and uh, they're going to be up here in the front. They're going to be facing towards the front, and you're here today, and I don't care what the need is. I don't care what the diagnosis is. I don't care what the doctors say. I know doctors report. I go see doctors every single month, and I'm still believing. I don't care. Listen, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to keep believing. I'm going to keep believing and trusting that God is the healer. He's never changed. I'm believing for my wife's supernatural healing. I'm going to keep trusting. I'm going to keep believing. I'm going to keep asking. I'm going to keep seeking. So this next song, this song, at the end of the song, 
The altar workers come. I'm going to come back up, and you need a miracle. You need a healing. You need God to do something in your marriage. I don't care what it is today. I want to invite you to come, and they're going to be willing to pray. And they're going to pray the prayer of faith. And the sick will be healed. And the blind will see. And the mountains will be moved. And the water shall part. In Jesus' name. Will you stand with me? Let's declare we believe in a God of miracles today. Thanks for watching or worshiping with us today. Hi, I'm Victor Montalvo. I'm one of the pastors here at City Church. And if you were encouraged by this message, take a moment to like the video. And we would love for you to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. And whether it's your first time or your hundredth time with us, I want to personally invite you to worship with us here on campus live. Online is great, but it's nothing like being in the house. And we'd really love to get to know you. So our hope and our prayer for you is that you would know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. And if you'd like help taking your next step, click the link on the connection card in the description below and we'll reach out to you. And if you want to partner with us in spreading God's love to this city and around the world, one person at a time, go ahead and click the link below to give now. God bless you. Have an amazing day. We we'll hope to see you next week.